The 2023 NFL Draft is definitely weird when it comes to quarterbacks. CJ Stroud and Bryce Young are by far the best two prospects, and guys such as Hendon Hooker and Anthony Richardson could also find their place in the NFL. In the middle of all five of those guys is one of the most controversial quarterback prospects we have seen in years. His name is Will Levis. Love him or hate him, Levis is expected to be a top 10 pick in the 23 NFL Draft, and some people think he'll be the biggest bust of all time, while some also think he could be the next Josh Allen. Unfortunately, I see a lot of hate surrounding Will Levis' name, and in today's video, I want to tell you his story, talk about how he got to this point, my thoughts on him as a prospect, and with everyone saying don't draft him, we're going to talk about that narrative. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe as we're going to have a ton of NFL Draft content coming this spring and you won't want to miss it. Leave a like if you want to support today's video and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's talk about Will Levis. So in order to understand how Will Levis got to this point, we first need to go back in time. Sports always ran in the blood of his family as his great grandfather was an All-American at Cornell and his dad played football at Denison College. His mother also played soccer at Yale. So you could say his family was pretty elite when it came to academics and sports. Unfortunately, he would suffer a family loss at an early age though. At only eight years old, his grandpa instilled with him an extreme work ethic and mentality to never give up in life. Unfortunately, his grandpa would never see Will become a superstar, but he left an immense impact on Will and was the driving force on how he got to this point. His mom said, quote, my dad was Will's biggest fan and most important mentor. They had a very special relationship and it pains me my dad was not there to watch his grandson compete on the big stage, but I firmly believe that he left such an impact on Will that he's going to carry my dad's legacy along with him. Will was always born to be a quarterback and was super athletic, so that's why he became the starter two years into his career at Xavier High School in, in Middletown, Connecticut. He was slowly starting to go up recruiting rankings, but there was one major factor that was going against him. It was his region. Sadly, there is a major stigma of guys from Connecticut not being able to produce as quarterbacks. Iowa head coach Kirk Ferentz said, quote, he didn't really blow up until the summer before his senior year. He would have these phenomenal workouts or go to different colleges and places, and we had a whole bunch of different coaches come and watch him throw, but none of the coaches believed in him. They thought he was a quarterback from Connecticut and he can't be that good. Instead of finding things that he was really good at, they would nitpick and find excuses not to recruit him. It was frustrating for him and for us. Iowa was actually the first Power 5 program to offer Will, and it looked like he was going to go there until another Big Ten program came knocking, and that was Penn State. At the time, James Franklin was the head coach, and Joe Moorhead was the offensive coordinator, and they'd always talked about having five quarterbacks on the roster at all times, and after Justin Fields flipped to Georgia, they searched all around the country for a new quarterback, and even then, Levis was their backup option. They originally wanted Jace Reuter, but he eventually went to North Carolina over Penn State. After that, they eventually went all in on Levis, and after patiently waiting, he got that offer. He got more than 20 total FBS and FCS offers, and he chose Penn State over Iowa and Florida State. He also showed interest in North Carolina, but Reuter obviously went there. In his two years as a starter, he threw for nearly 3,000 yards with over 30 touchdowns. He would have an opportunity to become the fifth quarterback for the Nittany Lions 2018 roster, and he was excited. But why did he go to Penn State? He said, quote, I've been to Penn State before and have done a lot of research and everything on paper just had them as the perfect fit for me. Going there absolutely validated it and if they did offer, that's where I wanted to go. Of all the options, it was the best to me and it was absolutely perfect. Had a great mix of academics and athletics and the people there were second to none. So Levis was an underrated three-star player who was supposed to be a quote-unquote replacement to losing Justin Fields, but not many were really talking about him. What's absolutely mind-boggling is Fields' so-called replacement at Penn State might end up going higher than Justin did in the draft. It's just absolutely nuts. According to 24-7 Sports, Levis was a three-star recruit, the number 28 pro-style quarterback, and the 652nd best player in the class of 2018. So how would he end up doing in Happy Valley? Levis would obviously redshirt in 2018 as he was near the bottom of the depth chart. He would get a couple of opportunities to play as he would come and play mop-up duty against Idaho, had two touchdowns on the ground against Maryland, and then had a touchdown against both Rutgers and Ohio State. He finished the 2019 season with 223 yards and five total scores. The potential was there, but would he ever really get a chance to play? Well, it would happen. After Penn State had a terrible start to the 2020 season, he'd get an opportunity to play some meaningful snaps. The first game came against Iowa as he went 13 of 16 for 106 yards. It wasn't great, but he was getting a little bit better. 
The following weekend against Nebraska, he threw for 200 yards without a touchdown or a pick, but had 61 yards on the ground. At the time when he made his first start, the Nittany Lions were 0-5 for the first time in program history. He would ultimately play in 15 games for the Nittany Lions and only made one start though. With Sean Clifford deciding to come back for the 2021 season, Levis knew he needed to do something. When he first thought about transferring, it was a tough pill for him to swallow. There were some long nights spent with long conversations and hard conversations about what the best decision for me would be. It was really tough. He would wind up entering the transfer portal and would transfer eight hours southwest to Lexington, Kentucky. When he arrived at Kentucky, he would be placed in a three-man quarterback battle between him, Bo Allen, and former big-time Auburn recruit Joey Gatewood. Ultimately, Levis would be named the starter and Gatewood would leave for UCF. Levis went on to have a very interesting 2021 season. He threw for 367 yards and four touchdowns in his first start in a Wildcats uniform, but then would struggle immensely in week two against Missouri. After that, he'd struggle in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games against Chattanooga, South Carolina, and Florida before finally putting it together against LSU. In that game, he had five total touchdowns and a dominating win. He had a solid outing against Georgia and then had three interceptions and a loss to Mississippi State. He'd once again have a brilliant performance against Tennessee with five touchdowns before he would somewhat struggle against Vanderbilt. He did finish the year very strong though. He had four touchdowns against New Mexico State through the year and then had four rushing touchdowns on the ground and a win over Louisville. Because of that, Kentucky ended up getting selected to play in the Citrus Bowl where he'd throw for 233 yards and a touchdown and a three point comeback victory against the Hawkeyes. Levis would finish the 2021 season with 2,826 yards with 24 touchdowns and 13 picks with nine more scores on the ground. Because of his arm and athleticism, many thought Levis could be a mid-round draft pick. Some scouts thought as high as the end of the first round, but for the most part, he was a consensus day two or day three pick, and while he did actually think about it, he ultimately was going to come back for the 2022 season. This is when the hype really began. There was a preseason mock draft that listed him as the number one overall prospect, and this got people talking. He would need to cut down on his turnovers, win more games, and have a much more polished style in order for him to get to that number one overall pick, and Levis ultimately didn't really do that much different in 2022. While we had three touchdowns in their week one victory over Miami of Ohio, Outside of one throw, he really did struggle against Anthony Richardson in week two against Florida, but they still won. He was underwhelming against Youngstown State, but did have four touchdowns against Northern Illinois. From there, he'd have back-to-back -back forgettable games against Mississippi State and Ole Miss, but where he'd have a miserable game against Tennessee, as he had three interceptions and a 44-6 loss. He'd have a bounce-back game against Missouri, as he had three touchdowns, but he wasn't all that impressive outside of a couple throws. And a loss to Vanderbilt, he barely had over 100 yards and didn't have a touchdown, was a non-factor against Georgia, and then just sort of had a subpar game and they went over number 25 Louisville. Personally to me, it made no sense as to why Levis was projected so high because his stats weren't that great. In 2022, he finished with 2,400 yards with 19 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, and two rushing touchdowns. His scoring numbers went down, he didn't play well in any of their big games, and the hype around him just didn't make a whole lot of sense. But that's just me. So what's really going on here with Will Levis? As I said, his stats really weren't that great, he didn't play well in a lot of big games, and the consensus is that he is going to be a bust. Let's at least look at what scouts are high on. They love his athleticism, they love his height, they love his arm potential, and apparently he's built very similarly to Josh Allen. His style has also been compared to Tim Tebow and Dak Prescott, but there's still a lot of questions about his game. There are definitely some flaws to his game, but he's willing to get better, and he seemingly is a really hard worker, so some think it will balance out. Right now, many believe that Levis will go in the top 10 to the Colts, and personally, I don't really love that as a Colts fan. I also think he's a little bit better than most people think. Everyone just assumes he's going to be this giant mega bust, but I would say to give him a chance, let him develop, and let's see what happens. In my opinion, it would be ideal for him to sink lower in the first round, so he could go to a team that's a little bit better, and he, and he could be a backup and learn, because if he gets thrown in as a starter on day one, I think he'll be set up to fail. I think the same thing for Anthony Richardson. The one thing I do know is that it is a miracle that Levis got to this point, and he's been doubted all along, so maybe we shouldn't doubt him now. Either way, I'm rooting for the guy, and let's see what happens. But what do you guys think? What do you think of the 2023 quarterback class? What are your thoughts on Will Levis? And do you think he'll be a boom or a bust? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.